This video is sponsored by KEH Camera. Today we'll be taking a look at some side-by-side -side examples from a 90mm lens to a 35mm lens which has been cropped in to give you sort of a 90mm equivalent. The reason I want to talk about this is because I recently did a video on the Leica Q3, sort of a first look video when that camera was released and in that camera being a fixed lens camera you have a 28mm lens no changing lenses, no zooming. However, there is a built-in feature for a digital crop. So uh, essentially what this is doing in camera is just giving you the option to crop in to several different focal lengths. So you can crop into a 35, a 50, 75, or 90. And while I think that is a useful feature and an interesting feature to see in a camera, especially a fixed lens camera like the Q3 is, I mentioned in that video that it's not necessarily the same thing as actually changing your lens and changing your focal length. Taking a 28 millimeter lens and cropping into 90 millimeters is not the same thing as using an actual 90 millimeter lens. And naturally, because this is YouTube, that sparked a little bit of a debate. So I wanted to make this video to just sort of clearly demonstrate the differences between cropping in and actually changing your focal length. Now, I don't have a 28 millimeter lens myself, but I have a 35 millimeter lens, which is relatively close, as well as a 90 millimeter lens that I've borrowed from KEH camera for this video. So what I did with this test is take the M11 monochrome and place it on the tripod and I took two photos, one with the 35 and one with the 90 millimeter lens. I kept the exposure settings exactly the same across both photos, didn't move the camera whatsoever. I just took the photos that were shot with a 35 millimeter lens and cropped it in to give me the same exact field of view that I naturally got using the 90. Looking at the photos side by side, the compression doesn't really change. I wasn't moving my camera at all, so my my, you know, distance relationship to the subject and also to the background that wasn't changing between photos. I was just simply cropping. Now, if I were shooting like a headshot of somebody with a 90 millimeter lens and I wanted to take the same photo with the 35 and keep my subject relatively the same size within that frame, I'm gonna need to get closer with the 35, which is gonna change that distance relationship and that's gonna change sort of the overall compression that you see and it's gonna give you a very different look. But for these examples, like I said, I didn't move the camera whatsoever kept it on the tripod and just punched in in post for the crop. I think this is why people say it doesn't matter to change lenses, you can just crop in post because you're able to get that same field of view. So why do we have different focal lengths at all? Why are we not just walking around with, you know, fisheye lenses? Like wildlife photographers, you know, hiking around with a 600 millimeter lens, save your back, just strap a GoPro to your hat and just sort of, you know, oh, a bird. Uh, another bird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't need a telephoto lens. I've got an eight millimeter so I can shoot everything all around me. And then if I really want to and get close up, I'll just crop in from that eight millimeter lens. Obviously that's not the way to go. And there are a number of reasons why that doesn't work. However, let's just talk about a couple simple reasons. We'll start with depth of field. How much of the photo is going to be in focus? Again, I shot these photos with the exact same exposure, so that gave me the same exact aperture on each lens, and you can clearly see a big difference in the final result based on that depth of field and how quickly that focus falls off. Whether you want a shallow depth of field in order to isolate your subject or a deep depth of field in order to get everything in focus, equal exposures on two different lenses are going to yield different results. If you take a look at a lens and you see the depth of field scale on top of the lens, that's why the depth of field scale is different on each focal length, because that's going to change. It's not a one size fits all. And I'm not here to say that you can't crop at all or that you shouldn't crop your images. I crop my photos anytime I feel like it's going to serve the photo better. You wanna use a 28 millimeter lens and crop to 90, go for it. Use a 28 and crop to 200, make it 300, I'm not driving. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that you can't just say, oh, it doesn't matter to change your lens, just crop in, it's the same thing. That's not the same thing. You can't just tell people that and expect them to get the same results or the results that they're looking for. Using a different focal length and cropping in post are just going to give you different results. That's all. Another pretty important part of this to think about is when you're cropping, you're cropping in and losing information in the frame. You're losing pixels, you're losing resolution there. 
Now the Q3 has sort of a unique kind of advantage here because that camera has a 60 megapixel sensor. So that's why that camera has that crop mode because it can handle cropping in pretty significantly because 60 megapixels, that gives you a lot of room and information to work with. If you tried to do, you know, that same sort of equivalent cropping on a 24 megapixel sensor or 18 megapixel, anything like that, you're gonna be getting very different results when you try to crop in that much. You're just headed straight to Pixel City. And if you're just you know, viewing the photos on your phone, on Instagram, you might be able to get away with cropping in significantly like that because you're seeing the picture you know, that big on a screen. However, if you're uploading them online where they're gonna be on your website and they're gonna be viewed on bigger monitors or if you're printing, especially with printing when you wanna make enlargements, you need all of the information and pixels that you can get. Otherwise, you're really gonna to start to notice that kind of you know, degradation of the resolution in the final print. So crop your photos if you need to or want to. I'm not against these things at all. Like I said, I crop my own photos when I need to. If I straighten the horizon line, that's going to crop in just a little bit. Just be aware of these things. You're changing the resolution, you're changing the actual size of your image, and depending on what you're doing with that photo, these sort of things matter. So yes, you can crop in to get that same sort of you know equivalent field of view, but it is not the same exact thing as using a different focal length. They're just going to give you different results. So I hope this video helped demonstrate some of those differences between cropping and changing your focal length. A uh, huge shout out to KEH Camera for loaning me this 90 millimeter for this test. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts of your own on this. Uh, like I said, there tends to be a lot of opposing thoughts on something like this, but I wanted to just share a practical, you know, clear difference between the two and just what some of the pros and cons might be. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I love you all very much. And last but not least, a huge shout out to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video. KEH Camera has been buying, selling, and trading used photography gear for over 40 years now. With a massive inventory of over 60,000 items, as well as a strict grading process ensuring the condition of the gear, you're going to be able to get incredibly high quality gear at an affordable price. Your purchase comes with a 180 day warranty as well as a 21 day return policy with the option to add extended product protection for your additional coverage. If you're looking to let go of any gear to make room for something new, you can also sell or trade in your gear to KEH Camera, which they can even schedule a pickup so you never even have to leave the house. Anytime you're buying or selling with KEH Camera, make sure you use the links and the promo codes down below. That'll get you 5% off your order or a 5% bonus on your quote. Thank you again to KEH Camera for all of their support here on the channel.